Awesome. Thank you for joining us on Diaspora Lounge today. We have a special edition because we have a pastor in the house with us. We're talking about something to do with religion. The title, as you see, is um, what is a juju and religion and the effects. Of <clears throat> what I really want to say is that to me, I, I see that Nigerians believe a lot in superstition juju and religion and resource to them for resolving issues and i have an observation of the way that i think that these are affecting us in nigeria but today we have a pastor here and then there are other people on the panel who are going to give their opinions too let's get in and see what this is like for a cross section of nigerians let me just play the intro and then we'll start thank you for joining us First thing you want to do is to regain your power. And it takes to the past. Oh my god, you need to see what she's going through. The husband broke her neck. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if anybody else has ever thought about things like this, but I have thought for quite a while that our perception and the way that we approach problems as Nigerians comes from a lot of focus on what can I do to resolve this? I am going to pray, I'm going to do this ritual, I'm going to meet this person to pray for me, I'm going to look upon God, I'm going to get on my knees. And I know that if you don't plant an orange seed in the ground, you're never going to get an orange tree, you're not going to be able to get the fruits. So I don't know how it's different for us in Nigeria when we have serious problems and we resort to hoping that something is going to suddenly spring out and solve it for us. Let's understand this. I will call on Akin to give us to start. Where's Akin? He's gone. Okay. So you can you say something quickly about it then? Let me just put it this way. Desperation and desperate times call for desperate moments yeah, i forgot to say i am a christian so when i spoke about relying on prayers and god and getting on your knees i don't want it to be mis misinterpreted it's not that i don't believe in those i'm just saying that i observe that people resort to just that in solving in trying to solve their problems all right Ajay, what do you want to say okay if i may i think um john um is a major is the opium of the masses, as was said. Um, in Nigeria, you're not feeling well. They ask you, how are you? It is well with me. You are dead broke. You don't have money on you. Because you think you want to do positive confession and positive thinking. How are things with you? Oh, we are rich. Excuse me. Saying the facts does not negate your faith. Now, when it comes to, I have an issue with a fellowship calling for a meeting on a Monday morning or a Tuesday morning when people are meant to be out there being productive. Now, I have also been one of those who out of lack of what to do have gone for such meetings but i had to rein myself in and call myself to order there's a time for everything monday morning when you're meant to be productive and using the brain that god gave you to make the money that will make you survive in life you are going to pray uh, i sow this seed so i, I will get hundredfold return uh, I I did this. I said, God is not a tumbo tumbo. God is not a, a game of cards. Let us do the right. The Bible says to him that knows to do right and does not do it. To him, it is sin. There is a time for everything and there is a place for everything. And by the way, you will say you are calling on the Lord and all you know is Jesus. But your mother will give you one soap to bath with you go and bath with it they'll give you one water to drink you go and drink it they'll give you something they'll say go and take it put it around your head 10 times before you go into the room with your husband and you will do it excuse me what do you really believe hmm interesting okay i was going to get to that that's good thank you jerry for saying those things for bringing those things up to uh notice now we have a pastor solomon in the house with us pastor is the pastor of the church 
and we're glad to have him here with us. Thank you for honoring our invitation, Pastor. Um, please give it's us your pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I know we're looking at uh, what, the effect of sorcery and um, religion in Nigeria. Juju and sorcery, they are about the same thing. And I believe that we are all believers here. We want to address and see how these things can be affecting the church, the body of Christ. I want to look at the scriptures to find out what is really going on. Uh, and why are people not really strong in their faith that they will have to fall back on things like sorcery or juju? despite that they are quote-unquote christians a christian that knows his onions the bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge the lack of adequate knowledge is a reason why people um have or decide to try something else um if this prayer didn't work, this God didn't work, this church didn't work. They want to try something else. It speaks to what we have taught people in the church. Mm. That is, I'm talking about pastors and leaders. If they have not been taught properly or if they have been deceived, you know, the Bible says in the last days, perilous times will come. People, uh, there are different reasons for which they will want to move and I can have testimonies of how people have tried to go into things like that and they have not been com confident in their own place in Christ. And so they go into such things. So what does this thing do? It actually bewitches people. It distracts them. It makes them feel... I was in a bus one time in Port Harcourt and um, somebody was saying, talking about she needed to that the devil was so strong that she needed to go uh, and get some kind of protection that she needed her pastor to be with her in the um in the labor room and then i'm like how did we get here and what was her reason that the devil is really wicked and so we didn't we don't we we misunderstand what the scripture is all about and pastors have not really helped the issue. So people have been misled. People have not been taught properly. And so we have great, great problems in the church. Problems of knowledge, uh, of not knowing the truth. You know, why do people not teach the truth? Many pastors teach what is not true. They use the scriptures to teach what is not true so that people can keep coming to them all the time and you cannot you cannot go you cannot miss the scripture and then get the results of the scripture you cannot go out of the scripture and get the results of the scripture you cannot it won't happen and so when the things will not happen the way they expect to happen they go to other sources and um so they will give regard to sorcery because it seems that they are not finding solutions to their problems, you know. So that's one of the things we see. There was a, there was a man in the Bible that bewitched the whole town. His name was Simon, a sorcerer. The Bible says they regarded him as a great one. But when, this, when the gospel, when the true gospel came in and... The, the people's eyes were opened to see the truth. It lost, that bewitching lost its effect upon them. And so many of people in the church have not found out the truth about who they are in Christ and about what God has done for them. I will close with this testimony, you know. Um, somebody came to meet me some years ago some time ago, some years ago and she was facing she was facing oppression intense oppression to the extent that she couldn't sleep in the night in fact she couldn't even doze off 
the moment she dozed off, she will have these spiritual attacks, you know. And uh, so she came to me to pray for her that is having these spiritual attacks. And when she met me, I said, I should pray for you. I said, no, I won't pray for you. I will teach you the truth. And then you will pray for yourself. And I will agree with you. So for about an hour or so, I began to take her through the scriptures to teach her her authority and her place in Christ Jesus. After taking her through the scripture, and I saw that she had faith and believed what I had shared with her, I now told her, you will now pray for herself. Anytime she dozed off, immediately she will have dangerous beings pursuing her in her in that you begin to be able to go into a realm of dreams and visions and she'll begin to see them pursuing her intensely and she will be scared that she would wake up so she came to meet me and so when she, she now prayed for herself and i agreed with her i didn't pray for i didn't pray with her i didn't prove i didn't sorry i didn't pray for her a few days later i saw this this excited lady coming up just approaching me with great intense excitement what was happening she said that she she had been sleeping ever since then one and two whenever she went into sleep she saw those beings and she now was the one pursuing them and they were running away from her Okay. It turned the tables. Why? Because she had gained the knowledge that brought her freedom. Uh -huh. All right. We ha we have not given the knowledge to the church. That is why we go after Juju and thank you, lead you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor. I. It's almost as if I will say that you are in the spirit because it's like you went into my mind and brought out what I was planning to say. Okay. Uh, it, which is one of them is that uh, the the church has not given the truth because we they need people to be reliant on them. Them exactly. And you just said that. Exactly. Uh, Akin, would you give us your thoughts? Yeah, I wanted to quickly say a lot of the things the uh, pastor said. I I totally agree with, but I want to buttress uh, one or two things. And uh, and the number one thing is that we should ask ourselves is how many Christians know who a Christian is? <laughs> how many Christians know who a Christian is? Hmm. And it is the most any Christian that is equipped with that knowledge who a Christian is that that person is dangerous since that person cannot be carried away by every whim or doctrine what we have what we have created is that a lot of people rather than read the word of god you understand me by themselves and allow the holy spirit to lead them in, you know in certain interpretation and maybe how they apply it to their how we reflect because the holy spirit will always give you a context when he's explaining to you what the tra the meaning of certain parts of the bible okay. now so a lot of people not do not have the time or do not consider it important that okay i need to read this word of god myself yes i need guidance yes and that's where pastors are there that's what pastors are there for but the work the bulk of the work has to be done by the person and for as long as you do not give it time, you will always listen to other interpretation of what the word says and how it applies to. And not the word of God, as I said, is a uh, uh, is all pervasive. What what it will do in one person's life is different from what it will do. The same word. What you do in another person's life is different because we all have different aspects of our lives and we all have different things that we are uh, facing. Peculiarities. Yeah, peculiarities. So it does not mean that because it means this to this person, then it means exactly the same thing to you. Huh. 
So a lot of the times, that's the problem. We will, yes, it's good to listen to guidance. It's, to li it's good to listen to sermons. But truth about it is that the only word that works for you is the word you know by yourself, that the Holy Spirit teaches you. You can have guidance that directs your attention to that area. But for the word to be personal, you've okay. got to study it yourself. And no, from that personal point of view, is from that personal point of view that efficacy comes in. Efficacy does not come in on a general level, on a lot of things. Efficacy comes in from the personal side of knowing the word. So, okay. Thank you, Akin. That's academics now. <laughs> I hope that we can grasp it. May I quickly say something? Another thing that I was going to say, which I think I should have said at the beginning, is that we have so many pastors and so many churches in Nigeria. And yet we have the results that we have in Nigeria that are far from satisfactory. How about this? This is what I, I say to people now. You have to be careful because the people who you, you call pastors, many of them are not even pastors. Many of them do not know God. Many of them do not believe in God. Many of them have no idea at all about God. This is just a man who became hungry and was in a difficult financial situation and he decided to open a church. Because I personally know people, even some related to me, who in their difficulties decided to open a church so that they will be able to collect money from them. Well, that's, we're going into tithing um, later on in another topic. And that's where the issue is. So when you have somebody who doesn't even believe in God, but you're seeing him, unfortunately, as your pastor, when you go there, he isn't going to impact any kind of sensible knowledge to you. And so that's why when you run Health and Skeletal and you don't have any results, you feel like, what's the next best thing to do? In our society, we have juju. And so you're going to run to go and do that. Or maybe... Oftentimes, people are practicing it together. So I even started to say that in Nigeria, I don't think we have up to 10 Christians. That's what I started to believe. And I, <laughs> I, and I mean that. That's, that's the way my heart is set now. Because when I encounter people, they talk about Christianity, they talk about prayer, they talk about God. But when you really get down to the, to the nitty-gritty in the situation, and you start to get into a deep discussion with somebody, they're going to give you suggestions that you know are very unchristian. And then all of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute, who am I talking to? And even though everybody's saying, I'm a Christian. So tell me, yeah. So just in, just just to put a little humor, there was a day I was traveling to Delta with my dad. So when we got into when we got into worry, my father decided to do an experiment. You know, so you know this olden days tally system of math. You do one, 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 then you cross. So he said, Jerry, I want to count the number of churches on each street, on each road. My God. We kept counting, counting. Every two minutes, there was a church. Every three yeah, minutes. They're not shrines. They're just shrines. <laughs> yeah. Tony, Tony, do you have something to say? And then we'll go back to Pastor. Um, also, I just, what I want to say is just in line with exactly what you were talking about. Um, and it goes to express equally what the Bible and what the pastor brought up. My people perish for lack of knowledge. There are so many fake priests out there, a lot of them. And like you rightly said, a lot of things bring them up. And so they get there to deceive a lot of people. But, you know, like I said earlier, desperate um, uh, measure, de desperate moments call for desperate measures. One thing that is something that uh, Uzo said at a point, the last, the last statement you made was that Oh, God, I forgot. But mm -hmm. anyway, the issue basically is that people need to, when you when you say somebody is a pastor, huh, you, we, you, can tell, you can tell other people lies, but there's somebody you cannot tell lies. You cannot tell yourself lies. If, the moment you start telling yourself lies <laughs> and you believe your lies, then you're gone. But let's just assume that you can tell everybody lies. You can put up a facade. You can put up an impression. Uh, say you're something you're not in your life. But when when the nitty comes to the gritty, you are who you are. You have certain things in your life. So you know how aligned, especially if you're a Christian, you know how aligned you are with God's word. 
you know how aligned you are with uh his words his, his commandments his, his his way of living now if you go to a church and every sunday you go to that church you leave that church feeling oh uh there's nothing wrong with me oh you've been told superlative words if once in a while you go to that church it does not query your spirit as to okay there are things i need to change there are things i need to work on in my life if every sunday you go you are happy go and you go home then there's something wrong you are being led you are being told things that you want to hear because if your pastor if your man of god is true you understand me the church is for the reforming i used to get frustrated when people would have a problem and all that they want to do is get juju or get um prayer to to provide a magical solution to it you know because but i i came to realize now that i can't really blame people you know why because if you're born into something and you are immersed in it the only reason why i may not be like that is because i may have had some other experiences that forced me to not go with the flow but for somebody who didn't have any kind of extra experience who was born into something and you were taught that you attain achieve things by some magic wand being waved how can i blame that person so we're in a place where now people do not even recognize that they have to take ownership of their own situation like i said you cannot get an orange tree if you don't put the orange seed in the ground so if you don't do the work for anything that we receive sometimes in life we receive things um suddenly unexpectedly but for many things when you receive something like that in the event that that thing is taken from you you're going to have difficulty because you didn't go through a process to know how to attain it so we need to stop rejoicing in in i get things without meriting it I, I, do you understand where i'm coming from because we need to have a process in our brains and development and i think that even god requires that of us it's like if you don't pass something through fire then you don't get a very high quality thing so that's where i think that these things are affecting us as nigerians because we do not believe in actually putting ourselves to test to go through something to know how to get what we want the, for any believer in christ the most important thing in his life is his personal relationship with god not with getting results to so solutions i repeat that as believers the most important thing in our life is our personal relationship with god and how does that relationship translates in everything that we do everything in our relationships and in our values while that relationship it is is personal it is not private and so that relationship has to influence the way we deal with other people yeah that was what i wanted to really say that area yeah <laughs> that was what i was trying to remember <laughs> so so if that relationship is your main goal and purpose for life is to see that that relationship is top notch Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. Your most important pursuit in life is not getting solutions to problems. Oh. It's getting to know Christ to the very depth of your soul. It's a great thing that you mentioned this may i quickly add something for you to to add to this so one of the reasons that made us bring up this topic is i'll just give one example or two a man who has low sperm counts and also sometimes a dis erectile dysfunction it's, it's not like that's an issue that has been an issue in the marriage and the wife wanted them to 
to go and get medical solutions for the low sperm counts. You know, at least even if there is erectile dysfunction, even with any kind of solution with low sperm counts, if it has to be them going through some other procedure medically for her to be able to conceive, and this man refused, he didn't want to do any of those. Lo and behold, he started to import, and this is in the U.S., in, in the U.S., some people who have already left Nigeria, and he started to import things from home, Juju, and she started to see raffia and different things in the house. And when she asked him, what is, this lady actually called me, you know, and when she asked him, what is this about? And he said, he's not, that she, she shouldn't worry, that she's not in danger. That he became worried because he's afraid that she's going to leave. So he, he was hiding these things. And instead of going to get a solution for the problem, he resorted to, let me do this. We have doctors, we have, you are already in North America. You have access to medical intervention. But because of the way that we think, we haven't been used to, there is a way to get a solution to a problem. I brought this in because they're talking about, and I had wanted to say it at the beginning, but I forgot about it. So that's what what brought us to, instead of finding, I mean, God has given us opportunities and ways to do things. Instead of using those, you first resort to looking for a magical thing where something will just happen without any kind of explanation to give you the result that you want. And in this case now, you also talked about your relationship with God and the way you relate with other people. So you don't want this woman to have any opportunity to go, to leave you, to be with someone else. And this is how you resolve, this is how you resolve this problem by trying to do juju. If she hadn't seen this, maybe he would have, maybe he's even been putting things in her food to eat, you know? Abraham, <laughs> this, this story, Abraham is a, typ a typical example. I'm sure there are so many others. Patience is everything, but I understand uh, where this is uh, where this man's case um abraham was 90 uh, as old as he was even the wife that's still trusting and look at the result sometimes the devil lies to us and makes us believe that through the charms it will work yeah it might work but what is the state of that child or that pregnancy is it ruled is it, is it of god or is it of the of, of the evil one People have to be very careful about, wow, I did this and it worked for me. Well, that is exactly the plan, the negative one, the, the, the very negative energy wants you to believe that it's actually not the case. Now, look, charms, talisman, amulets, is their, their object ascribed with religious or magical powers intended to protect, heal, or harm individuals for whom they are intended to. Ezekiel 13.20, go read it for whoever that is listening. Isaiah 40.12.31, um, let me read, sorry, just one moment. It says, um, making and worshiping, and okay, well, no, not that one, but Isaiah and Acts 17.29 reminds us of the first commandment, trying to use object and stuff in replacement to what God can do, the power of God. In that man's case in the United States, I mean, I can see why people fall prey to things like this. You know, well, let's say I am the man. Man, is it all this medical thing? What else are they going to tell me? Uh, do this, do that, do that. And at the end, what? you know besides juju or whatever the thing is it's not going to do me anything it's not going to harm me it's still the same stuff it's all the same helpful thing you know actually some people are going to believe nothing is going to happen there's no harm to this thing but this is only what we see or feel with our physical eyes or physical thing we judge this but not realizing the spiritual effect dangers behind it it looks good, but actually it's not really good. It might work for now, but in the long run, what, how good did that thing work out? That's well, the question. My own problem really is I, I the reliance on, 
<laughs> it's reliance on those things without doing, you know, but pastor said that it's not for you to solve problems. But I feel, you know, that's why I wanted to bring it because I really feel that as a human being, you are there living a life where issues will come and you need to figure out, you have a brain, use your brain to figure out solutions to the problem. And from some of those things, we don't have mm. to do them because we have doctors to do them. But I, I but, think that pastor is explaining but, something. But, but I you, know, from you know that overall, <laughs> eh? you know that overall, eh? things are the, things are the perception you have of them mm, yeah mm. now yeah. why i say so is that something is told to someone and they perceive it in a certain way because of their mindset and it is told to another person and they mm -hmm. perceive it differently because of their mindset mm. you understand me as someone would always say there's no good news or bad news depends there on how you take it yeah. now what makes it bad and what makes it good depends on your perception and your mindset. I love what Pastor said when he said the, only, the most important thing is your relationship with God. See, the truth about it is that anyone who knows God or who has, who, who has known God, who God has, you know, who has been with God, will, know, will not do a lot of the things that we're talking about. On the negative uh, spiritual realm will not because if you know your god you will know that he knows the end from the beginning you will know that even though quote and unquote things look things seemed bad concerning certain things in your life that they are bad is not definite because what a lot of the things that people that happen to people to the extent of your knowledge yeah, that 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 people consider bad even the people have come to realize that at the end of the day it was good it was not actually bad so <laughs> who gave me the term bad the people so but if you walk with god as pastor said you will you will realize and if you know that all things work together for good all you need to do have a relationship with your god love your god and for those who love god all things work together for good so that means there's no bad he didn't say all things work together for good or for bad he said all things work together for good for those that love god and those that are called according to his purpose now the issue basically this, this is where the problem is when the time that you know who and what people believe in and trust in during the trial during their trial period quote and unquote because it's all quote and unquote during their therapy when they face challenges of life that mm -hmm. is when you know who they really believed in or who they have always believed in okay. they can call themselves any name they can say they go to any teacher and uh, they can say oh they were these they were that they were even deacons and even pastors but the issue is that when the nitty comes to the gritty what do they refer back to is it god or is it juju people have itching ears i have been taking but i have some friends who have said let's go to this man of god this problem is going on and you are like let me just see maybe it's really a man of god and you get there and the person is telling you go to the beach and collect the sand from the beach or the person is telling you go to your compound and collect the sand from your compound come with salt come with uh, to, uh, with with, uh, uh, with orange come with this my dear oh, idolatry learn to run away these so-called pastors are mixing native doctor with christianity they are mixing mixing juju with christianity because they have not gotten over their warped minds this is what they were born into it's what they were born into is all they've known so they are mixing the word with these horrible practices now you that does not know your onions that does not know who you are in christ you are the one that is misled because you're chuko kokoro your long throat you want <laughs> you, you want you want, is, you want instant miracle because you want instant miracle they've told you do this do this do this bring this bring this bring this bring this uh, garlic bring this salt bring this holy water and then you'll be drinking holy water as okay, okay let's close it let's let's let pastor give us the final word and then let's close it uh. <laughs> Um, when I said that, um, 
our primary focus and goal should be to uh, work on our relationship with the Lord. It is foundational to all things. I did not mean to say that we don't have problems or it will not, we will no longer have problems. No. We have problems. But the point is, how do we see those problems? Yeah. And to whom do we go to deal with those problems? One way or the other, we must always go to someone else. But when you have developed the right values and the right relationship with the Lord, you will always walk towards doing that which He leads you to and which is pleasing to Him. So that no matter how anyone leads you, the Word of God always comes into your heart and says, no, that's not the right way to go. Yeah. That's not the right way to go. That's not the right way to go. The Lord is interested in our issues. That's why he says, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Nothing is mundane in the eyes of God concerning us. Nothing is little. The Bible says even the strands of our hair, he, he, he knows about it and he counts it. So we may not even think about that, but there is no issue in our life that the Lord is not concerned about. The question is, how do we relate with him to deal with those issues in our lives? Hmm. Are we patient for him to give us solutions? And directions? Because the Bible talks about the trying of our feet works patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that we may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, uh, Pastor for the beautiful con contributions. I would like for our audience, for those who believe in listening to pastors, remember that some of those people that are listening to are not pastors. They are people who have named themselves pastors. And when you listen to somebody, you can tell the difference between somebody who actually wants you to know and have a relationship with God and somebody who wants you to have a relationship with their God through them where you are reliant on them and you don't actually have the knowledge to live the life that God has purposed for you to live on earth. And with that, we will close this particular topic. Thank you for being with us. I believe and I pray that this conversation is going to bear fruits in your lives. Bye-bye.